Welcome to our Rollmaster actual play session. Ain't no place for a hero to campaign sets in the world of Duranaki, the continent of men. A gritty, cutthroat world where politics, sorcery, religion, and commerce are all intertwined and reign supreme. Treachery and murder both come cheap and characters need to be both smart and ruthless to survive. We hope you enjoy our story, and, as always, may the dice roll in your favour. This is episode 127 of Ain't No Place for a Hero. The party have decided to turn their attention back to Terek Nev and the secrets it may hold. We rejoin our heroes mid desperate battle with the so called Twice Lived in the rancid swamps of the Green Fester, just as Etienne has been felled by an unseen foe. Hello, I'm Chris, otherwise known as GM Chance. And, as the words say on screen, welcome to our story. That story is Ain't No Place for a Hero. Here are our heroes. Eight of them. Count them. Eight in total. It's a pretty big party. Uh, and in a minute or so, we're going to go to the players of those characters. And they're going to introduce uh, their characters a little bit more by way of a character development question or perhaps sharing an image or just generally filling us in a little bit more about the character that they're playing this evening. Before I do, two very quick comments from me. Sincere thanks to our supporters, the people that follow the channel, give us advice, suggestions, encouragement, and, and are generally our cheerleaders. We really do appreciate it. Thank you very much indeed. And um, yeah, please keep it coming. What we'd say to anybody else that's maybe um, come across this for the first time, these recordings for the first time, or maybe you've watched one or two and you're enjoying them, we really would uh, appreciate a like down below that little button down there give it a click or even better a subscribe um it really does uh, you, that that's a very simple action of yours clicking a button down below really does help our channel grow and help other people like you find our content tell your friends as well perhaps your old role master buddies from back in the day maybe they would be interested to see what role master in 2024 uh well this version of role master in 2024 the other thing uh, I would say, just a, a, a reminder, um, this is episode 127, count them. Uh, we've been playing for a very long time. We've been playing, in fact, uh, since July 2020, but we've only been recording these sessions for about a year, a year and a bit. If you're wanting to understand a bit more about the game, what's happened, kind of the broad uh, strokes of the game, either head up from this video in the, in the playlist you're on, to the very first video which provides a very quick five minutes overview video of kind of the theme of the game uh, um, or if you have a look down below uh, in the links of the description of this video you'll see a link to a pdf and that just provides a bit more information um not not too weighty not nothing too much to read but just for those that are particularly keen to learn a bit more about the story behind us all right as mentioned before uh, time now to uh, turn to the players. Uh, sometimes uh, in, in this game we, we switch to a pre-recording where the player uh, introduces the characters a little bit more and we're just going to alternate that and chop and change that a bit. And this evening we're not going to be doing that. So we're going to go straight to uh, the player live to introduce their character by way of a character development question. And the first person we're turning to tonight Giles the floor and the microphone Giles is all yours okay, thank you very much Chris um, so yeah tonight um, I play Tarquin um, and the character question I'm going to answer for him is has your character ever stolen anything and why did they do it um, so on return from um, 
the big wide world uh, where Tarquin met Etienne uh, in a former life. Um, mayhem uh, descended upon his village um, with much destruction uh, and much retribution. That re retribution led to some um, unfortunate uh, and slightly grisly ends to one of his best friends, um, leading to Tarquin stealing himself away from his village and everything he knew he knows so has Tarquin ever stolen anything yes he's stolen himself away hmm. from his village his history his past and essentially cast himself into the unknown um why did he do it I I guess he saw what he saw as being an injustice or a massive threat um and felt he had no option um and that in a winding way led him to this party excellent um Stealing himself, mm, novel. Nice. I, thought, uh, I, didn't, I didn't think you'd expect it, Chris, but um, when I thought about what what what, what had Tarquin stolen that was really important to Tarquin, I don't think he's a young elf. I don't think he'd see much more important than himself. <laughs> um, it's a, I hope he doesn't follow his controller too much like that. <laughs> um, anyway, um, maybe I could pass it over to Pete um, after that, Pete. Thank you. Cool, thank you. That's a oh, interesting... Yeah, I like that answer. Really cool. Um, so the question for Leif is um, same question. Has your character ever stolen anything? Um, why did they do it? Well, no, no. Leif hasn't ever stolen anything. Um, but the, his family and the people around him might beg to differ. So when I was um, rolling him up, there's, we were, <laughs> yeah, there were certain tables that we have um, to give the, the character a bit of flavor. And Leif did roll um, Kleptomania. As a character trait, I haven't played this at all. Haven't really touched on it much at all. Um, but just because I wanted to see how, when I started playing him, if it fitted in with the party with who he is and all that sort of thing, it hasn't turned out that way. But yeah, I, I like to th think of that, that he still does this. But the whole idea that what we spun for this kleptomania trait was that basically he's all about people. He likes connecting with people. He's a really he's an absolute people person and. Um, Part of that, he likes to touch other people's things because that's a connection to those people, and so he 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 doesn't think of it as stealing, but you know, other people's possessions do go wandering, and they might be found in Leif's possession, or they might just be found somewhere different. But he will have taken it, you know, absentmindedly, no no malice, but will have sort of you know fiddled with that, or, you know, just sort of felt on there, you know, and one night on watch, he might sort of just. Have a, you know, someone's pack is open, he might just have a wee look through and, oh, look at that. You know, I remember them, you know, thinking that was a special item for them and he would just sort of sit with it and, you know, appreciate the connection that item represents to that person that's meaningful to him. And then forget to put it back or, you know, so I haven't played that, but I'd, I'd like to think, you know, if anyone in the party minds, that that's sort of just an aspect, an eccentricity of life that they've all sort of gotten to know and put up with and perhaps, you know, there might be people who are a bit more touchy about their things and they've given a clear message and he'd listen to that and try his best to not. I'd, I'd, admire their things i'd love you to try to bring that in pete if you can i mean your call your character but um i i, I like it anyway yeah yeah well it's just it's just I, I mean yeah so not stealing certainly not stealing. no malice no mm. coveting yes. um yeah goes entirely against any sort of covetous thing just because because well, he, he does see positions as being quite um communal anyway i mean that's how his family worked um so for methan um how does your character feel about the different races they've encountered? A sort of stock standard answer from her though, but it is a large part of her background. When she was young, she met elves and was sort of overwhelmed by them and their sort of their, um, their connection to the natural world, their, their sort of their strangeness slightly, and their sort of um, aloofness maybe, um, you know, maybe she saw in, in, their, in this particular group of elves that she met, they were probably, I don't know exactly, who they were, but they were they were sort of just set apart from the mundane life that was hers as she grew up, and in that way she just loves elves and has a wants to live in their cities and wants to, you know probably until the the shine wears off and then she'll see they're just like everyone else. But um um but yeah that in particular. Otherwise she just sees takes people as they come. You know she might well have prejudices, but she does try to be um yeah doesn't see doesn't particularly try and see race from the elves because they're quite special nice um how can we please pass over to gray hello um amazing i'm playing gray um i'm gonna ask the gray 
Uh, has he ever stolen anything? And the answer is yes. Mm. He's stolen many things. Um, mostly he started stealing when he was, when his parents were brutally murdered and he had to go kind of fend for himself and he had to steal food, steal clothes, not that he wears many clothes, but <laughs> steal like little things along the way to keep himself going. He doesn't really steal anymore, but you know, he does love the shiny, so, mm -hmm. you know, a coin here or there gets taken off a table of some drunkards, you know, that's how it is. Mm -hmm. Um, and then with Demos, um, I'm gonna answer, what's the most disgusting thing that's ever happened to me? <laughs> through his sheets, uh, I'd say the clear thing would be genital crushing. <laughs> Mm. Uh, I don't know what that is, or why that happened, <laughs> or it just it came up in one of his main life events. But I'd say that sounds pretty, pretty yeah. <laughs> uh, yep. Yeah. Gross. yeah. Yep. <laughs> Fair call. Um, gotta love those background roll tables, huh? Uh. <laughs> it's quite funny because it's like he it was he went to a parade, he yep. built a tower, and then he had genital crushing. <laughs> All in a day. All in, all in a day. How about that? Uh, lovely. Who would you like to hear from next, please? Um, let's hear from Alex. I mean, uh, Kiros. Thank you. I don't like the sound of genital crushing either. It's not nice. Um, so I'm going to answer, what does your character consider their greatest achievement? So as always now with these questions, there's before and after the death. So the obvious answer is, although she had absolutely nothing to do with it, is not dying, <laughs> um, being brought back to life. But before that, um, I think for Keros and perhaps her owner, the a, a pivotal moment in the game, um, considering Keros and her owner were um, inexperienced, unsure, not really sure what we were doing just kind of going with the flow was when um, Keros made the decision to not walk away from victory and the big fat chicken man mm -hmm. and leave that cat to a fate worse than death. So she gets victory, but also we will never forget when um, some of the more wise and sage members of the party, um, I think the comment was when Keros said, let's, throw rocks at him and let's get him and let's get the cat was go on then <laughs> and um, I, uh, we will never forget that moment and I think it was quite a um, achievement for both Keros and her owner that actually you got this you can make some decisions and you don't just have to follow so that was yeah we will never forget that moment yeah go on then and let's all throw rocks at the chicken man <laughs> And, I, and this was obviously an event that happened way back at the beginning of the game, campaign before we were filming. Uh, but I remember that incident very well, and I remember who, who said that as well. So yeah, there we go. Go on then. Mm. Let's throw rocks. Mm. Thank you. And speaking of, yes. may we please of... hear our friend Graham. Hello, Graham. Hello. Hello. Sorry. <clears throat> I don't know what you I can't even remember what you're talking about, but it sounds great. <laughs> um, uh, anyway, um, uh, yes, um, discussing, uh, discussing, most discussing, oh, uh, first oh, uh, Graham, we've been having mic troubles with you, and you've just gone faints again, unfortunately. Most disgusting uh, place has been his Manta with all the slaves. Oh, yes. Action. Uh, he found that repulsive. Oh, it's, sorry, this uh, is for Etienne, not the ethanol. Etienne. Yep. Yeah, Etienne. Okay. And, um, and then for the ethanol, same place for most luxurious place ever stayed. Went from um, being tortured on the boat with losing all the belongings, most of the clothes, to living in abject luxury in about a couple of weeks, so that was good. <laughs> and Ely. Ely. That was a good man for Ely. You yes. got it. Excellent, thank you. Uh, we can now hear you again, Graham. So I don't know what happened, but but um, cool, we got you. Excellence, 
thank you one and all uh there we go gentle listener and gentle viewer that's the team all eight of them up on screen uh and pete thank you very much you very kindly pop the questions you usually do pop the pet questions down below so those are the questions that i send out uh to the characters uh, a few days before before we play you can see them up on screen there very good no more further ado pete i'm going to hand over to you please uh to give us a quick synopsis of what happened last time Sure thing. So we are in the midst of the swamp, the Alamin, the Green Festa, on our way to the City of the Dead. Lucky us. Um, so we had um, stopped for the night with a bit of time to spare to plan where we were going to stay for the night, and we chose this. Um, the guides recommended this place as a place that they regularly stay, and we elected to put ourselves on top of the wall to stop ourselves being... Um, uh, overrun by the undead as was you know pop um you know sort of coming from all sides the previous night it didn't feel great i think so there we are all on the top of the of, of that sort of ruinedish wall there with a fire underneath um we waited and they the, the dead the dead started to come um you know we've got a couple of ropes hanging down so we've got our escape and um all seemed to be going sort of well, or having a wee bit of a chat about the guides were chatting about a bit more about the, the their land and their people than Nereti. Um, and the undead ones arrived, and the fast one came first, and um, and um, Etienne did some wonderful dis disintegration on them. His spell, you know, sort of took out a few at a time, which was fantastic. And the Ethanol um, threw a cyclonic blast, which did did similar. We tried shooting arrows, and not with not with a great amount of luck. And I think Kiros did a couple of shot bolts as well. So we're all sort of having a lovely time, having a bit of a go. And then we heard this beast sort of sound in the distance. And we're like, uh oh, what's that going to look like? Oh, and I forgot to mention, for that also, um, Hashkit was, there was some sort of disturbance with the guides. Hashkit was sort of angry at, um, at, uh, oh, I forget his name. Tahoe. Qua Tahoe, thank you. Tahoe, because Tahoe had sort of neglected to, share a story with the guides about you know, some sort of rumour or a story of some of the undead in this part of the world being able to fly. And so that made it... And Pashki was sort of frustrated, I think, that he hadn't mentioned it earlier, and I suppose we were all like, oh, it probably won't happen, hopefully, uh, but it probably will. I think that was the general feeling. That was before they started to, uh, to attack. But anyway, we hadn't, hadn't seen anyone flying yet. Um, so, yeah, we were merely sort of you know, doing a few shots, they started to climb the walls, the um, ruined walls, and some were, were varying degrees of success, but I mean, still probably better off than, I don't know, being surrounded by them. Still not sure, we, yeah, anyway. Um, there were some odd ones that arrived, the tall skinny ones, they seemed to be scary as well, and during this time, we, the, for, for, there's the reaction to some of these undead, not necessarily all of them, is that we need to make a fear resistance roll because they are pretty horrific. And they sort of imbue that sort of fear in us. And unfortunately, um, Kiros and Tarquin and Demos all sort of partially failed or failed this result, the resistance roll, and are at 75% activity, which, yeah, was a bit debilitating. Um, unfortunately, for Leif, was even more scared, and he's at 100, nearly 100% activity. So he, he can't do anything at the moment. Um, hopefully, he'll be able to get another resistance roll at some point soon. But he, at the moment, is, yeah, code brown, probably. Um, so, what else did I have down in my notes? Um, yeah, so things were starting to look a bit, a bit, a bit dicey as some of us were losing sort of amount, amounts of our ability. And there was another um, sort of sound from the, the darkness and this sort of white clawed creature. Well, there's, there we go, there's the sound. This sort of unusual beast came lumbering out or quite quickly with big long talon, talons. So it's large and seeming quite um yeah seems to get on with the other undead or they're all on the same team so it's not so don't can't look for any sort of civil war there unfortunately so that's that's caught um come to the bottom of the wall and we'll just see what turns out with that one um but the real annoyance the really sort of shot out of the dark so to speak um that you know um from the field was some sort of is blast of essence magic coming out of the out of the night and hitting Etienne, unfortunately. Um, and it just was not 
the roles weren't in his favor and i think it's knocked him out or i don't know if he's still awake but um he did lose one of his his life his death saves unfortunately um frustrating as he is the person who has got the magic that combats undead and i have so um yeah some sort of enemy out in the dark that can cast quite effective magic um distance spells i think that's up to to date what did i miss perfectly um just one one thing for me and then i'll pass over to everybody else so etienne was here and yes he was he was massive impacts knocked him he was incredibly lucky um so i mean arguably he should have gone rocketing off the wall i said there was a one in four chance probably quite a high chance on retrospect but that's what i said that actually he got knocked sideways and kind of bounced off both gray and has collapsed on the wall and that's indeed what happened so instead of plummeting all the way down uh to here that's actually the cat victory who is actually up here with keros there um instead of etienne plummeting all the way down uh here as he probably statistically probably should have he has actually collapsed unconscious uh on the wall and as is usual if somebody does use a lose a, a life level he is out of the fight so um he is still alive because uh for, for viewers that aren't familiar with this mechanism brawl master is such a deadly game that each character gets three call them death saves life levels whatever you want to call them three opportunities to die until they die for real so etienne amazingly has not lost one but he uh, until now so he is still alive he will continue to function he'll probably be a bit bruised but he won't have significant injury uh but he's out for this fight any other questions pete that was a great summary thank you any other questions comments anything anything else i need to to know nope okay if we're all sitting comfortably if we're ready to go let's start the game Right, we are not surprisingly going to go into rounds. Just sorry, I'm just jotting down one little last thing before I do. Uh, shit. Three and let's see. Three. Cool. We are ready to go. We are going to put some combat music on because we are in the middle of a desperate, desperate fight. Get your thinking on, get your planning on, blow on your lucky dice, we're off. Going into rounds. Okay. Cool. Uh, new encounter. Initiative. Now, anybody that has a bow on the string or an arrow ready that I need to change going once going twice if anybody is parrying for any reason i don't think anybody is but if anybody is parrying please jot it in the tech in the chat uh the computer has rolled initiative and we are off um so the very first thing that happens is uh just going it's happening to an npc so it's five all right 11 six Okay, so Silsi, your less, your, your more junior guides, has an important dice roll to make. He's got to make a 59 or better. Exclamation mark, exclamation mark. 
R space D 100. Yikes. Those that are standing next to Silsi, which would be Grey at the stage, that's probably about it. Maybe, perhaps Tarquin. Yeah, Tarquin, you would have noticed this because you're looking down here. Um, suddenly, Silsi is is struck or is hit by some violent, violent impact. And this is the E impact critical on Silsi. Exclamation mark. R space D 100. 46. I was staggered. Takes 20 hits. Okay. Um, So, Silsi is, is staggered. I'm going to say he's going to make a maneuver roll to stay up on the wall. He was hit moderately hard, nowhere near as hard as Etienne, but he was still hit quite hard. Let's see if he keeps his balance. The wall is relatively wide. It's six foot wide. Let's see if he keeps his balance. 46. Uh, I'm going to say it's an all or nothing. just he he gets pushed back and basically at the last second pash kick kind of grabs him and prevents him going over the side however oh god yes definitely Un really unfortunately he was holding on to his composite bow at the time and silsi has dropped his composite bow and it just goes sailing down and lands uh down here so silsi who managed to shoot one of these things previously has dropped his bow, he screams in pain, kind of bounces off Pashket and nearly falls off backwards. And um, Grey, you're standing next to him and you can hear the, the hissing pain coming through Silsi's breath. He's been hit hard. It's kind of wheezing and staggering. He's not looking great. That hit him really hard. Whatever that was. Neathanol, you're next. Um, I feel where um, where these attacks have come from. Uh, sorry, I can't I can't hear you, Graham. I feel where where these attacks are coming from. I think you said is she aware where these attacks are coming from? Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Um. Just sounds like your mic's muffled. Is is your is it away from your mouth? No, I'm speaking right. Into the okay. Uh, is she aware? Uh, no, she's not. Sh um, she's not aware. Um, she doesn't. Right now, she's not aware. No. She's been preparing around, I think. Is that the memory of that uh, uh, I, I don't know. I'm going to have to say, yeah, if you think so, yep. Um, and the, the two things that are coming up the wall towards her, that she to see, um, how close are they, and when they might be able to take the wall? I, I, I picked up the things are coming up the wall, and how close close are they, I think. And, and when will that be at the top? When does she think they'll be at the top? Uh, I the see, wall? I see. Cool. Um, so the wall's 40 foot high, 45 foot high. Uh, a, a quick scan would, would show you that's where they, they are proportionately on... 40, 40 foot. Uh, generally, someone can climb about 10 foot around. Um, they might be here in perhaps three, four rounds, maybe, maybe less. Uh, they're not going to be on you next round, you don't think. Um, oh, I can hear you. There you go. Great. 
Yeah, and I've discovered the problem. My my phone was connected to something else. Um, <laughs> what? Perfect. So we, we can hear you. It must be affecting my computer. Yeah. Um. So. Uh, so she's got a. She's on a. Remind me a zero for rolling a spell. Sorry, a zero, a zero for rolling a spell. Yeah, I mean she's um. What's the, the, the negative, negative or plus to rolling a spell at the moment? Oh, uh, yes, yes, yes. Um, so she one round pooper sneak, one round pooper sneak at a fifteen. Correct. Oh, okay. One more, one more. Uh, she'll prepare then. Okay. And she'll continue p to perceive with the other twenty-five percent. Okay. Uh, so she doesn't get the full perception, but she can get a snap. Give me a, a snap perception roll, please. Must. 74. Okay. Uh, plus 82. Uh, she, she... She doesn't see anything exactly, although she thought she saw some movement out here, but she can't be sure. But nothing more than that. Okay, that's her. Uh, moving on. Um, uh, next actor is, uh, okay. This creature has, has rushed up and it's, it's, it's very big. It would stand at least, at least 10, maybe 12 foot, foot tall. Um, it, it, it lumbered up. It wasn't blindingly fast, but it lumbered up reasonably quickly. And then it's just stopped. And it's just kind of at the bottom of the wall. And you can just see it, those close that are glancing down. It's just kind of doing this with its head. It's kind of shaking its, its big, horrific, ugly, awful head. Kind of from side to side, kind of slathering. And it's looking up at you. But it's not, not doing anything else this round. Uh, next actor is Tahoe Carpenter. Um, doesn't do a lot. Grips his sword. Praise. Uh, next. This thing here moves over. And starts kind of pacing here. Grey Roughwind is next. Okay. Okay, sure. If he's dropping down, that is an action. So moving from um, uh, careful drop to the ground is a 20% action. Is that what he's doing? Or a rapid drop to the ground for 10? Yeah, he's just kind of like, you know. Duck down for 20? Yeah, duck it down. Okay. Okay, cool. Give me a perception roll, please. It's, it is, of course, must. Uh, Could be a really amazing, don't forget. What's his bonus? Uh, bonus. And that was a full parry. Um, you, you don't see anything for sure, but, but well, sorry, you don't see any 
discernible shape, but you've definitely seen some movement out here. Definitely, you are almost certain in this direction. Okay. Out here. Uh. All right. Next up is. Eight. Eight. Oh. Um. Okay, so this this one here, in the ethanol, you, you're the only one that really sees this. Loses a, a grip on the wall and nearly falls and makes very minimal distance up this uh, uh, this pile of rock. A reasonable amount of handholds and stuff, and these things just seem to kind of, their hands kind of almost stick onto the stone, but but for some reason it slipped and nearly fell, but didn't make much progress. Keros, you're next. Hello. Um, can, she, can she see bunches of them? How, like, are there groups? Which is a group with the most of them? Uh, she looked, she is facing this way because she got affected by one of these last time. Yes. Fr frightened her. So that's what she, she's looking down at these. So she's looking down at that. Okay, great. Can she, um, try sleep 10 on them? Sure. It's a... Six level spell. Mm -hmm. The area of effect varies. It's a hundred foot range. Does that mean it's like the circumference thing where I can get all of them in one go? <clears throat> nope. The range is how far that you can cast the effect. With sleep, it works on you. You you identify your prime target, and then oh. the, and the, and then the 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 if 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 your spell works on that target or if it doesn't work on that target, it can spread out over other targets. Oh. So who's your prime target? And then who else would you like to affect, ideally? Or all of them. Okay. Everywhere. But ever. Starting with... <laughs> the one in the middle. Uh, back one. Is it 100 what? foot? Let's check. It, I think it is. So from the wall... Yep, easily. That's, that's 100 foot. Goodness, there. Yeah, easy. Sure. She wouldn't have seen the critter climbing, I'm guessing, without a perception no. roll. She's only got the 75%. Yep. So she'll go for the one. There's a group of five there. There's one in the middle, kind of on, on its own. Next, that that one. Can she go for that yeah, one? Yeah, sure. Give me a roll. And, uh, okay. Uh, no, no prep, but she doesn't... Well, she, she doesn't need it. But she can get the bonus of prep, of course. But she, she nah, chooses, she's she, just going to do it. Chooses not to. Cool. Give me she a roll. Does. It is 73. It's a good roll. What's, what's her base spells? Uh, oh, base spells is... Sorry, I get so lost on the sheet. Base spells. Oh, is that on the other the skills? It's a skill, yep. Yeah, sorry about that. Um, right. Base... Oh, that's maths. That's not helpful. Base spells... Oh. Minus one? Yep, that's why right. Why is that a Oh, because she died. That's right. Um, yeah. Rain, that's why the prep can come in handy. Uh, 21. It, it is, call it 30 foot away. 30, 40, no, it's about 40 foot away from you. So z plus zero. Okay. So there we go. Okay. And then it needs uh, to hit all of them as well. Sure. Maybe. Sure. Yeah, all of them. So... There's no apparent effect on that one. Oh. Spell washes over onto this one. No apparent effect here. Oh. Same here. Same here. Oh. Same here. But you do cast the spell. That's nice. But they're still awake. Okay. So sleep doesn't work, team. She calls out sleep, no work. Okay. Okay. 
Uh, next up is uh, life. You, I'd give you three words just because I'm generous. I'm scared. <laughs> Two words done. I'm, I'm shit scared. Maybe. <laughs> uh, Demos, you're next. And what's right? Well, who's he next to? He's next to Life. Life and uh, Etienne is on the on, on the collapse on the um, the rock wall next to him. I think because he's quite a caring guy, and he'd probably want to like have his shield up and just kind of be kind of crouched protectively next to Etienne. So Done. Done. Okay. Cool. Uh. Okay. There is a... cacophony of horrible noises from these things. And if that didn't wake you up, I don't know what will. Um, next. Tarquin. So long as it takes no action, he's going to slide to start off with. <laughs> yep. Um, he's only got 75% action, is that right, Chris? Correct. Can he prep with 75% action? No, it's a 90% action. How far away are the baddies on the ground? Uh, the closest ones to him, approximately, uh, call it 50 foot away there, maybe, and a bit further, maybe 60 or 70 foot away there. Okay. Um, so the next question, you might not be able to answer this enough. Wasn't around the last two times, but is there any way he can make his wrap his arrows in something and cover them in oil so they can burn uh he would need to make a fire well, uh, there is a fire down below i'm more interested in knowing if he dips his arrows into that fire will they burn and how long has he got before he can fire them so um, so yeah. so fire arrows are are a a thing they're definitely much less of a thing than they were in Hollywood, um, but they are a specialist. They are absolutely a specialist thing that you buy. You could try to cobble something together, but whether the the piece of material would stay attached or whatever it is you're going to use would stay attached to the arrow and burn, uh, unlikely but possible. Uh, to, to to make to make such an arrow, um, to make an arrow that would maybe last, I'd, I'd say it would take at least a minute, a couple of minutes at least. And probably it's twelve rounds. Okay, that's fine. Um, uh, he he's going to have he's going to use all seventy five percent as an opportunity action parry. Then, so if anyone fires anything at him, he's going to look to parry it. What's he parrying? Uh, so par parrying is if you have a sh so parrying is with a sword, or if you you can parry a missile weapon with a shield. Does he have a shield? No, no, he doesn't have a shield. Yep. Uh, he can, uh, if he's just trying to avoid, he can do a, a dodge with his with a 75. Um, does need a bit of, so a dodge maneuver is 100% action activity is needed, so he can't do that, I'm afraid, either. Um, it, like getting down low makes him a smaller target, if that's at all helpful. Uh, how much of his action will that take? Twenty percent. Okay, so he's going to do that, yep. and can he um, have an opportunity action to snap cast landing? Yep. 
And, and so because it's snap cast, I think it's only 10%, is that wrong? Um, and so, essentially, so, what so he's going to do is... So just to qualify, there are instantaneous spells, which are 10% action spells, and they can be cast at any time over the round for 10% action. But any other spell needs to be cast at 75%. Yep, no, so landing is an instantaneous cool. spell. Cool, great, so great. We're going to need some help from you. Essentially, what, what he wants to do is crouch down. Yep. 20%, yes. I think. Yes, yes. Save 10% opportunity action landing. Yep. And use the rest of his. What will it be? 35, 45, 55, 65. 40% um, action to perceive. Can he, can he use perception as an opportunity action? So, what he wants to do is watch. And if he's going to get hit, he wants to fall off the wall and use landing so he doesn't yeah, smash cool, himself. Yeah, cool, cool, cool. So, um, yes, he can watch. And if something comes at him, he wants to jump off. Cool. I've uh, uh, got that, and I'm happy to go. Happy to go with that. Cool. Okay, that's so, uh, but you want to give me a perception roll as well. Is that right? Uh, of course, yep. Yep, obviously. Give me, give me a roll. And this is how much of us are you using for perception? Well, it will be 40% because cool. he needs 10% for his instant yep, yep. spell. So, so you uh, get 10% uh, plus 10 to this roll because you're using above the 30%. So you're having a really good look around. Emil? With with his, his massive, massive roll of eleven. Um it's must. Could be amazing. Oh. Uh can you roll again, please? Eighty two. Cool. And what's his perception? You were gonna ask and I should have been organized. I think it's ninety eight. Thank you, yeah, it's huge, yep. And then plus ten. Um, yeah, so, Tarquin, you don't you don't see or any hear anything out of the ordinary. I mean, if, assuming out of the ordinary is a whole swarm of undead horrors coming towards you, you don't see anything else, unfortunately. It's not out of the ordinary in this game. Thanks, Chris. Excellent. Cool. Um, moving on. Uh, my fun. Um, she is going to shoot the glory, the old glory, our friend. Okay. Sure. This guy, this this thing here. No, oh, just a second. Just thinking about it. Oh. Can you show a um, scale for how long? What is it? Okay, I'll just ask this. She um, is concerned about the missile fire from the other side. How long is 20 foot on the top of our wall, please? So from Mython, 20 foot is... Uh, that's 21 foot to Etienne's unconscious body. Okay. So, um, would it be possible for her to put a wood wall up? Between her and where the miss where the spell the the fire that the shot that hit Etienne came from. So along here. Yep. Uh, a ten foot tall by twenty foot long by two foot thick. Um. So, sorry. Say those dimensions again. Ten foot tall. Yep. Twenty foot long. Yes. Two two foot thick. So you're standing on a six-foot-wide wall. Yeah. Uh, um, I would say uh, it's possible, but uh, riddle, riddle this with me. If suddenly this wall just appears in front of everybody here, it hasn't got to be attached to something as well. No, it just says it must rest on a solid surface. Okay. Yeah. Um, I might ask for a self discipline I will ask for a self discipline check from everybody here, not to kind of just get thrown by it coming up. Um, yeah. and, and basically, it's 
very, very close to where you are. Uh, I'd, I'd ask for some. How, I'd like to. I'd like to get some kind of accuracy roll on this because accuracy on this would really count. No, also, can I just ask what would the impact be on the combatants there? I mean, we're now we, we're operating in a six-foot space, and that's different to operating in a four-foot space. It sort of would be would it restrict us more? Might restrict you more. I'm more worried about Mithan mistiming it, and if you mistime it by misplace it by a foot, yeah, um, you could end up knocking people off or whatever. I usually don't ask for such a precise roll or for such a precise. But this is literally on a ledge, so I'm gonna I'm gonna ask I'm gonna ask Mithan for you to make an agility check. Uh, it's not gonna be horribly high. I'm gonna ask for a um, an all or nothing oh. light, an e all or nothing easy agility check to make sure you place the wood wall in the right place. Cool. Oh, sorry, I was sorry, I wasn't. I was looking for information rather than saying this is definitely what she's going to do. So okay. still sort of considering. Sorry, because okay. um, I think that's just it might not be a good option. Um, so I think you could you could do it. Um, it's I would ask for two things. Firstly, to see if she could place it. It's an easy roll, an e all or nothing easy roll. Um, even if she did, I'd, I'd still would ask people to just make a kind of a check to see if they involuntarily take a step backwards or, or something, just suddenly this thing comes up in front of them, uh, just disconcerting them or, or whatever. Again, that wouldn't be massively hard. That would be a comparatively light maneuver. I mean, so, and so what would be the consequence if she was to say out loud this round, not pass it this round, prepare this round or do another action this round and say to people, I'm putting a wall, a wall up on the edge here, so she'd still have to do the accuracy check, but would reduce the... Self-discipline. Yep. Would yes. it? If she yes. gave some warning. Yes. Okay. So, and just can I get a um just um yeah, is it going to affect our ability? Those who are hiding behind it affect our ability to operate. What's the? Yes, it will narrow. If if you wanted to, no one has done so yet. But if you wanted to walk around each other or bypass each other, it suddenly yeah. that becomes a, a lot harder. It would still be awkward. Because you really don't want to fall off, um, but suddenly having that wall up, taking occupying quite a lot of space, that would severely it would make squeezing past each other not impossible, but uh, uh, but more dangerous. Not danger, danger. Wouldn't affect us operating in our own space though. No, you'd still be able to fire bows. You'd still be able to draw and, and use a sword. Okay, cool. Uh, De will... Demo Demos might be affected with a spear, however, a long weapon. Okay. Okay, so she will she will give that warning. Okay. Um, so she will say, um, so I think I'll, I'll just say that. with all the information now, I've got to decide what she's going to do. Um, he's going to load her bow. Yep. yep. Oh, is she? No. No, she's gonna she's gonna be sensible and she's gonna prep. Okay. <laughs> so she'll reduce her yeah chances of failure and she, and so she's got ten percent left. She will she will use that to say what she's going to do. Okay. She will describe you know to give be you know warning. I'm gonna be doing this. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Done. Cool. Next round. All right. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, two. Oh, so this goal seems like it's a good climber. Now everybody here has definitely made fear rolls. Yes, they have. Yes, they have. Like, everybody has done at least one, so I won't be asking for that immediately. Um, and this thing makes quite good progress coming up here. Uh, next. Uh, Silsi is still gasping for breath next to you, uh, Grey. Five. Yep. Uh, 
Comes off a bit further. Uh, Pashkets. Uh, Pashkets uh, holds. T takes his bow in his. He's just kind of steadied uh, Silsi. Um, mutters something. You think it might be a curse, Tarquin, or uh, Grey. He said, Tark, um, Pashkit has been very well mannered up until now, but he's really not sounding happy. Takes his bow in his left hand and draws his falchion, this big cleaving sword that you saw he used to very good effect last night. It really did seem to be highly effective at um, cleaving these things. And he starts chanting um, in a reasonably low voice. Uh, but definitely loud enough uh, for both Grey and Tarquin to hear, and he's holding the falchion out in front of him like this and chanting. Uh, one. Is number hmm. strange. Four. Oh, there. Oh, there's the zero. Okay. <laughs> uh, fair to say, uh, the school this thing whatever it is is not that effective at climbing it, it makes a very very pathetic kind of attempt it gets to about there this round um and that is the end of the round okay next round rolling an initiative anybody that has a arrow on the string anybody that's thinking of parrying anything like that pop into the chat now and we're off um, one very, very, very brave person, uh, please, can you roll a 10? There were 11 people on the wall. There's now only 10 left. Does someone want to roll, please? I'm counting it off from Tarquin. A D10, one D10. Somebody brave, give me a number. No, but I will. Okay. So a D10? Yes, please. Oh, dear. Five. One, two, three, four, five. Grey, coming at you. Um, so suddenly, Grey, you, just like Etienne, and just like Silsi, either side of you, experience this massive impact coming from definitely from this direction uh and it smashes into you do i have an impact sound i'm not sure if i do but there's this whack into your body and uh gray i would like you please to make a rather important resistance roll um versus essence so you are what level please gray eighth i think Eight. Um, and what? He has got a shield up. He's got a shield up. Uh, yep. Sure. This, this, however, is a slightly different type of incantation. I'm really sorry, and it does. He and, and, an sorry. He's rolled an eighty-four. He rolled an eighty-four. It's pretty good. Um, that's very good. Uh, I will take that. Um, what is his... E I was going to ask you, what's his essence? Uh, plus, 12. plus 12. Okay. So you had to beat a 44 grey, and you rolled an 84? Is that correct? Yep. I would say uh, that is a...
Bumfa. So somewhere from out of here, this blast of energy hits you, Gray, rocks you. you. You probably take a half a step back, but your just innate ability to basically negate whatever this evil force is from out in the gloom, um, you resist. And that the incantation, the spell, the sorcery, whatever it is from out there, doesn't affect Grey. Nice work, Grey. Sorry, Grey. Keros yells, are you okay? He says, yes. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> oh, really? This is a defining moment. That's your three... We're friends. <laughs> it's, a big drop. it's a big drop. That's a big a drop. High pressure moment. It's a high up. pressure moment. Totally. <laughs> wow, we'll have to come back to that. The ethanol, it's all yours. Um, so the the big thing that's climbing up the wall. The big thing that's the, you know, the one the the bigger one. Yes, it's down here, yep. Uh, it's on oh, sorry, no, the one that's climbing up the wall fast. Uh are there some of these things that are climbing up? Yep. There was one that was making really good progress, you said. Uh, yep, this one here is coming up reasonably quickly. Alright, uh, can she cast a spell at that one? Yep. Yeah, let's do that then. Steps over, yep. Um, cool, give me a roll. She prepared two rounds? Yep. Cool, what's the roll? 85. Nice. And what's the what's the spell? Cast to create a dust devil, I a cyclone that races up and strikes the target, delivering a C unbalancing critical. Who does not resist it? No resistance. Okay. Uh, to, the, to, to those who don't resist it. Oh, to those that don't resist it. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So, uh, what was what was your roll again, please? An eighty something roll. Eighty five. Eighty five. That's a good roll. Uh, what's her base spells? Um, is that a sorry? I don't. Um, what level is she? Is, is ten. Oh, ten. Ten. Cool. Ten. There we go. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, and you are tenth level. And this thing here is. That level, okay. Right, it has to roll that or better. Oh. So it needed to top 130 to resist that spell. On my physical dice on my desk, I've just rolled a 9. I'm going to roll a 1d10 and see if that... What that, that, that is. So it's a 90... Exclamation mark R space D 100. So it's a 90. Uh, oh, damn it. Sorry, wrong roll. Exclamation mark R space D 10. Six. I'm afraid that's open ended. Uh, and the exclamation mark R space D 100. 49. Is that going to be enough? Really sorry, that was a hell of a good roll. Um, your Dust Devil blasts down at this thing. Normally it would knock anybody off and send them reeling 20, 20 or so foot down to the ground. This thing horribly, sickeningly manages to hold on to the stone, the ethanol, and it is not affected. Uh, she would like to duck with the remainder of her round. Cool. Check it out. Done. Uh, next up. Great. You just resisted some evil magic from out in the gloom. What are you doing? Um, Grey would like to cast. Uh, he's going to cast Night Vision. Okay. Yep. 
Uh, just one sec. Just got a little bit, do a little bit of counting here. Uh, cool. Um, cool. Cast night vision, please. Give me a roll. Fourteen. Uh, what's his base spells? What what level is? What, yeah, what's his base spells? He's level eight. Level eight. Uh, yep. uh, does this spell require preparation? Uh, Sorry. How do you how do you know? Uh, does it have an asterisk next to the uh, next to the name? Giles is saying no. Doesn't. Doesn't. Okay. So 14, negative 30, uh, plus, because you didn't prep, plus um, 8 is negative 8. Unfortunately, Gray, that is a spell failure. Yeah, <laughs> Can you roll the spell failure, please? Yeah. I should have seen him gesticulating too long. Oh, no, 98. <laughs> roll again, please, Gray. Plus 72 is 170. Do you... What happens to poor Grey? Severe strain takes toll on caster. Spell misfires. Caster takes five hits and is stunned a whole minute. Six rounds. Uh, is he lying down with the shield on top of him? He's not lying down. He's, he's squatting down. Um... Take five hits for Grey. Uh, always gesticulate. <laughs> always gesticulate. Might not have saved you even in this case, however. It might have. Might not have. Don't know. Um, and stun six. Ouch, Grey. And that is you, I'm afraid. Yep. Uh, Life, you're still out, I'm afraid. Uh, three words if you want three words, because I'm a nice GM. Are you? Uh, no. <laughs> no, yeah. Um, of course. Uh, I, I don't think so. No, no, it doesn't have anything to say. Okay, cool. Uh, okay, again, this creature at the foot, this large thing at the foot of the wall is just standing there and it's just kind of, kind of lolling its head side to side is looking up at you but it's just kind of doing this 20 seconds to be doing this so um keros your turn to act and happy to say keros you have managed to uh shake the fear off you you're now operating at 100 percent if you come into closer contact with one of these things again like if you see it up close if it kind of changes your scene if you see a new one you may require another um fear roll but right now you're free to operate it with 100 percent thank you um so she can see directly in front of her the, the on the wall she's looking this way would she know can she look the other way <laughs> for the ones climbing uh uh, I mean, she, would she hear them? Would she feel yeah. them moving? I'd say she'd have to spend some time looking, or at least have a quick glance. Can she do a 10% perception, please? Uh, look, look, I would just say looking over, she can at least see that one. So if she okay, she's, turns yeah. around, she could at least see that one, yes. And she's can aware she put, that, that they're coming, yes. Can she please fire a shock bolt directly at that one? Sure thing. Uh, from that angle, let's have a look. Yeah, she could she could lean out and zap. Yep. Okay. Give me a roll. Cool, Leo. Fifty-one. Fifty-one. And, and do you want the? Uh, where is it? Plus one hundred and three. I've got it. Uh, there is no range modification. Um, it doesn't get its DB because it's climbing. It's very, very slow. Uh, that is a colossal. 
Uh, sorry, sorry, I missed the roll. It was a 50... Um, 50... Three, sorry. Uh, three. 51. 51. 51. Uh, Plus it's... 103. Yep, it's still overkill. So... Uh, 184 minus 50 divided by... So you will do an additional damage. Uh, it's on armor type 4. Uh, 1, 2. Divided by 2. 17 plus 12. A whopping 29 uh, hits. You do it 29 hits in uh one sec one sec one sec one sec one critical less cool uh in an a yeah just an additional just an a uh electricity crit just give me one second here's the blast Uh, roll the A electricity when you are ready, please. 55. 55. Uh, normally this thing would be, uh, stunned, uh, but it doesn't get affected by stun. However... You absolutely smash it off the side. This creature goes flying and it drops lifeless again to the ground below. That was... Killed second level. Huzzah! Huzzah indeed! It is definitely a... Can I have uh, another turn? Because I did so well. No. Uh, what else? What are, Do we have a little merry jig for you as well? Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Nice work, Keros. Down. Thank you. Uh... He says he loves you too. <laughs> Oh my god, stop! It slipped out. It wasn't the right moment, but you know, what is the right moment? Because life is short. And you're being attacked by creatures. Tarquin, you're next. So he, he I think, is going to, seeing that success, put an arrow on the string. Um, and I think that's 50% of his action, isn't it? Um. For a short bow, I think it's fifty percent of his action. It's sixty percent. Yeah, and he'll spend the other fifteen percent of his action, presuming he's still in fear, finding the most suitable target. Okay, done. Super. Uh, next. Uh, Silsi. Uh, has kind of recovered from uh, what hit him last time and sees Pash Ket, who is still standing there with his bow in one hand, his falchion out the front, and just chanting, 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 chanting. Uh, and Silsi does the same. Holds grips, keeps his bow. Oh, no, he dropped his bow. Draws his sword, and again, just starts this kind of ritualistic chanting under his, uh, relatively loud, not under his breath. The fun. Uh, so she, if she can, she will give warning. So say casting wall now. Yep. Um, and would cast the wood wall as described. So along the as close as she can to the very edge of that. And can I just double check? Um, we had an incident, or had a thing on Jewel Island where Kiros was going to cast an ice wall. Yeah on people and it just doesn't didn't work if it was going to land on people yeah we, the way the way we said was um incorrectly we played it that actually it did damage I, that's not right right but uh if you if you screw up this 
role of placing it in the right place, uh, yeah. it may cause your companions to make a you and your companions to make a maneuver roll to avoid falling. Or to get out of its way, sort of. Get out of yeah. its way, exactly. Yep. So, so what's the maneuver again? Sorry, it was difficulty. Yep. So I said before it was an easy maneuver. It's based on your agility. Uh, it's all or nothing. Give me an agility roll, please. Ah, here we go. Off oh, your 88. 88. That's good. Plus, what's your agility? But, this is why she could do it. She's an archer. Plus 27. So 27. she's got high agility. 115, 110. So she's absolutely accurate where she positions it. Uh, let's see if the spell goes off. Give me a roll, please. She is doing the gesticulating and blah, blah, blah. Yes. Plus 15. And, yes. Uh, yeah. The 100. Oh, yep. 31. 31. Uh, 31. The spell goes off. Uh, now you can you can vary the length, correct? So you can tell me how long, etc. You want to do it. Um, hang on, sound effects for the spell. Uh, spell goes off. Okay. Um, so let me just grab this and this. And this. Now, how long does Methan intends to make this piece? I think we need all the cover we can, so she's happy for it to be 20 foot long. Okay, from where to where? She, she would like the far end to be... Uh, the, the, sorry, the Neathanal end to be... Positioned so Neathanal can sneak a peek around the wall, but nothing can climb around the wall from that side, if that makes sense. Okay. So basically, on the very end of the wall, Matt, to the yep. very end of the, of the, the wall, but so that Neathanal, or the person on the end of the wall, can look around without overbalancing, yep. so nothing can so sort just, of just, easily... Just, just, just one second, just get me the... Yep. Yeah, sorry. The measurements here. So that's 20 foot to... To it's twenty foot to there. Okay, cool. So that that stone, all right, just a sec. I'll come back to you once I've just got, got the wall sorted. It was 20 foot to there, I believe it was. Okay. And, whoop. And. Whoops. Wall is up. Probably not that tall. I'll, affect, I'll adjust the height in a second. Okay, uh, so now, sorry, Pete, can you describe where where it's going to go? Well, the, just the intention was for the Neathal end of the wall to be have a sliver of gaps for her to look. Yeah, yeah. So nothing can climb around there. So if something climbs up below the wall. Nothing can really climb it. Sorry, squeeze around that gap. But then the person on the Nethel can still look in that direction. Okay. Yeah. Safely. It was how, how tall? Ten foot. Ten foot. Characters are approximately six. So. She's happy to make it six foot, actually. She'd like to make it just a bit shorter than okay. needs. Yeah. Okay. So, kind of about there. Is that approximately what you had in mind? Yep. Yes, thank you. Um, and just a thought that, that I mean, that's twi 20 foot. Yeah, okay. I think our figures are quite large compared to it. 
Uh, yeah, they probably are. But, you know, rough enough. Rough enough. Okay. Cool. Done. Cool. Oh, thank you very much. Um. So, can I ask for her? Um, I set a self-discipline check. Yeah, let's 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 go with that. Um, just a, a medium for you, Mithan. You knew it was coming. All the rest of it. Uh, I'd make it actually a light, so a plus ten to this roll. You've got to beat a um, hundred on self-discipline with a plus ten. Uh, sorry, got to beat fifty with a plus ten to this roll. Four. Sorry. Oh, uh, so she rolled a 64, and her self-discipline is. It's, it's the the big stat, isn't it? Hey, hang on. Um, no, you'd you'd warn people four plus twenty to this roll. Sorry. Okay. Cool. Thank yep. You. And so, it's the big stat, not the bonus, right? The. Uh. No. 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 The bonus for the stat. The oh. Bonus. Okay. Yep. Bonus oh, for plus, the stat. Plus ten. So plus 10 what is she, what is your roll? Thirty four. 64 64 so she's fine um okay. cool uh i'd ask the same role please for neathanol we'll do that yeah we'll do the, this rounds neathanol just to make a check you get plus 20 to this roll it's base and it's highly unlikely you'll take a tumble but there's a small chance you might just kind of get discombobulated with this thing going up in front of you is it, does it, the fact that she's crouched down make a difference? Uh, I don't think so, because it's just suddenly appearing in front of her and it's really close. Does she flinch back? Basically, I'm thinking about does she flinch back from when this thing goes whack down like inches away from her? That's what I'm trying to do. So it doesn't matter whether she's crouching or standing. Give me a roll, please. 96. You're fine. No problem. Kiros, I'll ask the same for you too, please. Yep. 38. 30, yep. 38 plus 20. Uh, 58. You're fine. Uh, Demos. Uh, Demo, is Demos actually behind the wall or not? Not quite. Half. I'm still not still close enough to you, Demos, that I'm going to ask that you do make the roll, please. Uh, you're on mute, Aiden. 13. 13. 13 plus 20. Uh, what's his self discipline? Sure, it's high in subject. Plus 7. Plus seven. Not enough. No. So, w w in my head, this is about you. Suddenly, this thing comes whack down in front of you. You kind of get startled. Yes, you're ready. It was coming. Uh, I'm going to ask for a moving maneuver to see if you kind of keep your balance. I'm going to go with it being an easy maneuver. So again, highly, highly likely you'll pass uh, based on your agility. All or nothing. Give me a roll, please. Make it high. Isn't Gray, isn't Gray stunned? Not, not Gray. This is Demos. Ah, right. S sorry, two? Yeah, that's not high, Aiden. That's the opposite of high. <laughs> Plus, so roll again, please. That's a negative. Minus... Five. Okay. So five, ne uh, two, negative five plus 12 is a 9. No, it's not, but you have a 60% chance, 60 or under, and you are fine, Demos. No no further issues. Even if you miss that, you still there's still a good chance you're okay. But give me give me a roll. 60 or under and you're good. 60. 60 or under. You 60. 60, you're fine. Ah, yeah, exactly. That's that's it. So suddenly this wall comes smack down in front of you. And just go, oh, oh my god, real, real back. Uh, and life. What do we do for life? Life, you're petrified. Um, 
I I'm still gonna ask for a roll. Life. You're good. Life's good. Yep, seventy-three. Cool. You're fine. Okay, so that that wall is is now in place. Uh, okay. Done. Anything else with the remaining twenty-five percent of your action, Mithun? Oh yes, yeah, sorry. Um, she will begin loading. According to chat, according to chat GTP, you can get six people wielding swords in a twenty-foot line. Okay. That's with wielding swords as well. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Cool. So, it's pretty, pretty accurate. Oh, what does she do for a twenty-five percent? Oh, sorry, was I on mute when I yes, said yes. She, begins, she begins loading. Loading. Sorry. Thank you. Cool. Uh, okay, back. Number one. Sky roll any better? No, not much. Makes a bit. Whoops. Makes a bit more progress, but not much. Uh, number eight. That's number eight. Terrible progress for this one. Climbing quite slowly. Uh, Demos, a wall has just appeared in front of you. You just about, you got wobbly, but you stayed, uh, um, you stayed on your feet. You are there. So you can see a little bit past the wall. A step this way and you'll be able to see more fully, of course. Okay. So Okay. So I would like you to make a maneuver check to get moved next to Mithun. Your 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 friends are obviously not going to impede you far from that. They're they're going to try to help you get past. But it is quite awkward up here. The, the wall has restricted your space. Uh, your panic situation, etc., etc. So I'm going to ask for a... This isn't an all or nothing. But this will show how much progress you make. But it will be a comparatively hard-ish manoeuvre. Other than just... So normally it would be very easy to walk along this wall. I'm going to say it's going to be a, a medium manoeuvre. If you roll really badly, you could you could fall. If you roll just simply poorly, you probably just don't make very much distance. Give me a roll, please. Eleven. 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 What's his moving and armor skill, please? Oh, God. Uh, how do I find that? Is that a... Is that a... Is that a... So it's a skill. Uh, rigid leather armor. It'll be a negative. Plus zero, yeah, or well, plus zero. Okay, 11. So, yeah, as kind of foretold, he just doesn't make much progress. He kind of, maybe maybe it's been because of the, the you know, nearly falling off before or whatever, but he just shuffles a little bit away along. He's kind of cuddling up next to Keros, perhaps. Whoops. Um, kind of in between Keros and, oh, Damn it, he doesn't fall. Um, He's fine with that. He's, he just doesn't want to get shot. Okay. Damn it. So I don't think our, our, our figures are going to allow him to do this. Uh, maybe if I do this and this. There we go. There's a space for him. Yeah, whoops. So he's made... Very little progress. It's kind of just path life. Okay. 
Uh, uh, Patch Kit is continuing chanting. Oops. Ooh. This thing fairly scampers up the wall beneath you. Slathering and um, yeah, it's looking hungry. There. And that is the end of the round. Uh, okay. Uh, end of the rounds. Initiative. Anybody have an arrow on the string? Tarquin, I think you do. Tarquin does. Cool. Tarquin, you get a bonus because you're ready to fire this at the start of the round. Uh, rolling initiative, and we're off. And okay, Tarquin, you're next. And he wants to shoot the dude climbing up the wall. Yeah. Ideally, in something that's soft and squishy. Soft and squishy. Give me a roll, please. You'll get a flank on this. It is a... Uh, yep. Give me a roll, please. Uh, I must have done it wrong, so it came up a hundred. That's a Does roll. I want to check to make sure that's I a roll. do a roll. I think. That's a real roll. If you check, if you check the same sort of format of the roll as above, I think I think it's the right roll. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Did, did you just roll? Did you just roll a hundred? Nice, mate. Roll again. First, first time ever. Excellent. Time ever. Nice. Roll again. Seventy-eight. Nice. One hundred and seventy-eight is the roll. Uh, Thank you. I didn't believe it. Nice one. And he's got plus 71, I believe, on his bow. Is that right? 76. 76. He's gone up. Go. Cool. Uh, flank attack. This thing gets absolutely no DB. That is a absolutely colossal, like, walloping. 269 minus 150 is divided by just one second while I calculate the additional damage. I would do if I had my required rule book. Where is my rule book when I need it? You can just let me kill him, Chris. That's fine. <laughs> you certainly hit him hard. Oh, for goodness sake. Um, I, I think a death blow is fine. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, number one and 119 on one, and it's a short bow from memory, correct? Oh yeah, I can't remember the broader concept. Um, I think it is a short bow. I think you're right. Cool. Yes, it's a short bow. You're correct. Okay. What about? Whoops. Uh, is a ludicrous amount of hits. 29 plus 22 is a whopping 51 hits. That is huge. Uh, and the additional crit, so you do him a D crit. And... And a secret. So roll the decrypt first. Okay, so the exclamation mark uh, D100. Yep. 98. <laughs> I, I, I <laughs> channel, channeling a bit of EQM here. I think. <laughs> Nail sucker and lower back, internal bleeding and shock, kills for on six rounds. These things are not affected by shock. However, however, um, wallop. Uh, and just for fun, please take that. And then if you want to roll the uh, the secret as well, please. Uh, 
That's 40. I need to know how to, um, what level and how to skill yep. them Cut. so yep. I can Coming, level. just coming, just coming. Cool. 40 on a C. Uh, normally you'd be making this thing bleed, but it doesn't. It doesn't bleed. However, you reach your arrow back, Tarquin, and uh, actually give you the pleasure of describing what happens. I'm not sure how much damage I do, but certainly he'd be aiming for the middle of his mouth, that nasty maw. He'd be wanting to put it through his upper uh, lip and sticking it right into the middle of his skull as hard as he could. That's what he'd be uh, hoping to do. Exactly this noise. Splat! And this creature with a Tarquin's arrow and the force of Tarquin's shot rockets this thing off the wall down and it collapses in a heap and does not move yeah, baby. nice work tuck well, where's my where's my gm sound effects that is definitely how about some hijinks <laughs> nice yeah, work can... tarquin Although we can't hear it, he'd be dancing to that. Excellent. Excellent. That is killed. That's killed first level. Gone. Um, 51 hits killed first level, just so I can score it. Yep. That's it. That's it. Plus the, plus the criticals. You. Nice. Nice shooting. Uh, next up is... No. Neathanol. A wall has just appeared in front of you, Neathanol. Um, she's preparing again, and um, she will crouch close to it. Yep. I guess if she's noticed that thing wobbling around down there, she'll try and keep out of its sight for the moment. Okay. So Done. she'll crouch from that side and uh, prepare a spell for the next time. Done. Done. Thank uh, you. And Thank she you. may as well, um, if she's got anything left, perceive, I guess. Okay. Uh, but sh where is she perceiving? Or what? What? Where is she looking? Uh, where's the wobbly thing? Uh, well, she actually she she does have a ten percent perception. Um, yes. So what's the wobbly? I don't know what the wobbly thing is. The guy, the thing that's you, you did the impression of it um, <laughs> going back and forwards. Oh, it's down oh, so here. She would have to okay. look look around. No, 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 no. no, no I don't want to don't look at it. Okay. I just want to check how they're climbing up the wall. Okay. Uh, I'll just give you a glance for that. Um, no need for a perception. This one is is coming on reasonably fast. Uh, this one here is making slower progress. Um, so they're not climbing as fast as you feared. Okay, so uh, they won't get to me in the next round by my estimation. At this rate, you're free at least for one more round. All right, thanks. Okay. Uh, all right. Um, this thing, this horrible creature here, uh, stops its head wobbling. I mean, and takes a couple of colossal steps this way, and stops its head wobbling and looks directly up at Gray. And Gray, the hairs on the back of your neck start prickling and something horrible could happen to you oh there's the nine and there's the ninth yikes um I do. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> okay, Gray. 
Um, your what level, please, again? Uh, eight. Eight, thank you. Uh... What is your ch channeling resistance, please? Two. Sorry? Plus two. Plus two. Uh, Gray, would you like the good news or the bad news? The good news? The good news, yeah, nothing else. The good news uh, Keros said she loves you. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's it. Yeah, job done. Uh, <laughs> it just rolled a 99 on its attack. Um, which means that you've got to roll to for a, resist, a, a, a channeling resistance roll. You have to roll 155 or better. No pressure. No pressure, Gray. I rate you, rate you. I rate you, bro. You can do it. I rate you. Okay, great. Um, unfortunately, a 34 does not quite beat 154. Um, this is what happens. You have so a plus, Gray? You have a plus, Gray? Yes, plus two. I calculated that on. Uh, this is the sound of the spell. And what happens next is utterly, utterly horrific. There is this intense pain that courses through your body, Gray. And then this kind of sense of release and that, that section that that fraction of a second of, of releases is, is actually is 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 a good feeling for a second and then there is just more pain that happens because what is happening is blood is being pulled out of your body it's coming out of your face it's coming out of your nose your chest your hands all parts of your body and it's congealing in this cloud and the swirling cloud of Grey's blood spirals its way down to this thing down here. I'm pointing at the map, but this thing down here. And it's just reveling its arms and just being drenched in Grey's blood. And it's just making this sick kind of gurgling noise as Grey's blood is being literally sucked, pulled out of his body down towards this creature and this creature is firstly bathing in this kind of red mist of gray's blood but then even more horrific for those that are looking closely the blood that has landed gray's blood that has landed on this creature's skin is being absorbed into this creature gray you are taking 11 hits around Chris, can I ask a question, a, a technical question about how the game plays? Uh, can it wait to your turn, please? Is it yep. possible to wait to your turn? Cool. Um, and then, yeah, this thing shadow, uh, shambles a bit further down and just kind of is just wallowing in Grey's blood, clearly loving and absorbing Grey's blood as it comes showering down on him. It is sickening, utterly nauseous to watch. Uh, Leif. Okay. Uh, Keros, you're next to act. Now you are... You might have heard Grey shout out, but you probably... Probably un uh, unaware of what exactly is happening. 
um, she'll be very concerned to hear Gray call out. Yep. Um, she's behind that wall. She is. And how far away is Gray? Please. Well, you, you don't. You'd have. You don't know what's wrong with them um, at this stage. Uh, so, what do you do? Um, in terms of how far away he is, you would know that he is approximately uh, twenty-five foot. Can she see anything else climbing up? Uh, a, a free glance would would give you. Uh, she's aware of this one, kind of directly, not quite directly beneath her. Is she aware of that one to the side? She may be aware of this one too. Uh, yeah, she's aware of that one too. Okay, can she please call out to Grey, I'm coming! Mm -hmm. And then fire a shock bolt at the first one. That she one there? Be aware of. Okay. Yeah. Okay, give me a roll, please. Fifty-three plus one hundred and three. Uh, no range modification. Yet again, um, that is maximum, and it doesn't get its DB because it's climbing. Yet again, that's maximum hits. So one hundred eighty-six minus one hundred fifty. What about two is 18 plus 12. Uh, you do it 30 hits in a E electricity. Uh, sorry, an A electricity. Uh, and if you want to roll the... Hang on. What's the sound effects? Uh, roll the... E uh, the A crit, please. 100. Oh, hey! It's personal now. It's, it is personal now. Uh, that's, that's the second 100 this game. That's that is, wild. It is. Because that's this a 1 in 10,000 chance of that happening in three hours. So that's <laughs> wild. Uh, I, I, I can read you the uh, what happens, or you can tell me what happens. Um, with her angry little one arm. Yep. <laughs> she's shaking. She's got one ear out to grey, and then she, from her hand, she sends out teeny tiny, thousands of them, teeny tiny little lightning strikes from her hand into the face of the critter. Excellent. Um... And just to add to that, he oh, per perfect. Head strike, foe's brain falls victim to massive shock. Surface burns, foe drops into unconsciousness and dies in six rounds, plus 20 hits. Uh, that thing is uh, uh, falls to the ground 15 or so foot down um, and still smoking as it hits the ground. Can she call out, I'm coming, my love? Yes, she can. She's got 25% action, so she can definitely do that. Can she stop? No, no. Can she, no, she, she, she can, if she wants to. Uh, she's also got Demos coming uh, in her direction, so the, you might have to do that kind of funny dance when two people are kind of coming towards each other. You can try. She'd like to funny dance towards Grey. Okay. So I think, Grey, I gave you the same manoeuvring, um, bef uh, Demos the same manoeuvring a medium, so give me a medium roll, please, Keros. Uh, suggest you don't fall off the wall. Yep. Give me roll. Yep. 44. 44. Uh, what's her agility, please? Agility bonus. Uh, uh, Is that a skill? Is that a yeah. 23. 23 is the bonus? Yeah. Cool. She's pretty agile. Uh, 
So she makes 67. Now she's only operating off 25%, so she can't go that far. But um, she makes, uh, yeah, kind of that distance. Gets to slightly the other side of life. A little bit further than Demos. Okay. Cool. It's the end of her round. Uh, next up. Gray, you are... Uh, blood is is coursing out of you. 11 hits per round is a staggering amount of damage. Uh, you're also stunned for another 5 rounds. What do you do? Uh, being stunned, what your options include. For this number of rounds, the target may not attack. They may only parry with half their offensive bonus. Uh, normal DB to crit and seal, etc. is not affected. The only other actions allowed are movement and maneuver, both modified by 50%. So you can move at 50% of your normal amounts or maneuver with a negative 50. Uh, say again, sorry. If I had to get one of those little stun berries that they've got out of this little. Okay. Account, yep. Okay. Yep. So scarf's one of those down. Uh, you are now stunned uh, four more rounds rather than five more rounds. Anything else you're doing? Uh, maybe like roll slightly towards Keros. <laughs> Uh, shuffle slightly towards Keros. I'll give you that, like an inch or so. Yep. yep. And we'll call it call it quits at that. Okay. Uh, this one. This one has a burst of speed. Oops, not that far. Definitely not that far. Hard to be sure on the ethanol, but you would say maybe 20 seconds more, and it's going to be up top. Not not next round, but likely the round after that. You're guessing. Uh, next. Uh, no. No. Uh, Pashket and Silsi are chanting of anything they're chanting is getting louder. Uh, Demos, you've shuffled down to about here. What are you doing, please? Ethanol. Uh, I mean, he doesn't want to push them out of the way. I'm sure they've got their own plan. Uh, but he, he's, he'll just, he'll, he'll just keep. I think he's just going to try and get a bit closer so he can see what's see if it's coming and, and say, I can stand it. Okay, so move past Mithan. Can can she can she respond? Yep. So she'll say, "I shoot, then we swap." Okay. Okay. Sure. Or something to that effect. Yep. Yeah. Cool. Done. All right. Uh, so, hold action, Demos, or. Yeah, he'll wait until she's two. Okay. Speaking of Mithan, it's your turn, Mithan. Uh, she'd like to shoot and then swap. Ah. Uh, yeah, it's just... Uh, I'm going to give it quite a lot of cover because it's it's just kind of coming grounding over that lip. So it will have um, probably 50% cover. Sure thing. She'll give it, a, give it a go. Give me a roll. That was number eight. Yep. Mm. Yes. It's been a night of extremes. She rolled a one. Oh, that 
is a fumble with a bow. Sure is. Give me a roll, please. Oh, okay. And then roll a 26. 26. Yep. So she'll fumble and then swap. One, one's 10 thumbs just cannot handle loading. You lose a round of action for this round. Uh, okay. And she, you know, she'll do the whole pushing up again, you know, moving back to let him fast if she can. She, she, can ju she can't move in any meaningful way herself, but she can yeah. shuffle a little bit forward so Demos can squeeze past. If Demos, you wish to. Okay, give me another. Give me another. Hey, Demos, give me another um, uh, medium maneuver, please. Twenty-three. We decided that his bonus was plus uh, zero. Yeah. Uh, twenty-three. Twenty percent. I mean, you, you and Mithan basically swap, swap places. Uh, yeah. You, you basically you do what you wanted to do, but you don't make much uh, ground. Graham, you had something you wanted to say. Uh, just checking on the width of the wall. With the wood wall, we've got four foot, right? Correct. So we were about two foot. Not, e even if someone's turned yep. at right angle not, to the wood wall, you've got yep. two foot, right? Yeah, not a lot of room. Not a lot of room. Okay, Ithan, Demos, that was your two turns. Uh, that is the end of the round. Um, initiative. Uh, Tarquin, you no longer have plus 50. No one else, I don't think, has an arrow on the string. Please put any parry that you're putting into the chat. We're off. Uh, hmm. What's this thing do? Yeah, this creature here is just kind of lolling in Gray's blood as it kind of boils down all over him. Seems to be, it's kind of rolling its head around. You don't know if these things feel pleasure or whatever, but you think it's loving, sucking in your blood through its pores. Great. Um, Nathal, you're next. She's not aware of this. No. Um. She has heard Grey scream, I would give you that, but, um, but that she, uh, the rest of it, no, she's not. Which is a this bit marginal, but sorry, sorry, Graham. Which is a bit marginal. Keros, maybe, a bit generous, saying you could hit off and see your lover, but or your friend. But anyway, sorry, 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 Graham. Your turn. Um. So I've got one. She's what prepared one round, and this thing's going to attack her next round. Is that what we're thinking? You think so? Yep. <clears throat> Um, all right, I'll risk it. I'll cast. Okay. So it's it's still got partial cover because it's just coming over this lip, just so you're aware. Oh, in that case, opportunity uh, cast when it's not got partial cover. Okay, done. So if that's that, if that's next round, fine. Okay, done. Uh, Life, you are, uh, can you please? Make another resistance roll, this time at negative 10. Uh, oh, no, just, just before, sorry, just before you do. Um, just before you do, I just need to check the stats. Can you remember against which critter it was that stunned you? I think it was one of the skinny ones this way, is that right? It was, yeah, it was... No, no, no. Uh, it was one of the fast ones. Okay, cool. Yes, fast one from the other side that um, Etienne d disintegrated. Because cool. I thought I was like, has he stopped being scared? Yep, cool. Uh, so, uh, but he and he was facing this way, correct? Yeah, he was. So now he's looking at the wall. Yeah. Okay. In that case, in that case, because I thought it was the skinny ones the other side. In that nope. case, 
Um, no resistance roll, depending on what he does. But right now, he's got a wall in front of him. He's free to act. Okay, okay. does he have any... Okay, cool, thank you. Um, he will um, turn to look at Grey. Okay. Scream. Yeah. Uh, did did, did register the big glory one? I mean, he was stunned, but did he still? Yeah, he would have seen it. It's pretty hard to miss that mist of blood stream. He would have, he would have maybe not seen that, but he certainly saw it coming up. Uh, he's probably he hasn't necessarily peered over the side and seen it, but he's certainly seen this cloud of blood coming off Gray. So and he'll say out loud, "Gray's bleeding." Yep. Um, and uh, he, I mean, he's he's armed with melee weapons. I'm sorry, I wasn't prepared for this action. <laughs> I didn't know what was going to happen. Um, um, uh, and he will, uh, yeah, he will snap past combat two. Cool. Give me roll. And he fails on sorry, one uh, or two. Uh, yep, an instantaneous. Yeah. Fifty-eight. Cool. Spell goes off. He's got 90% of his round left to act. Um, and he would like to do a perception... Yeah, a perception roll out... Uh, past the end of the wall, out into the darkness. Out, so down this way? Uh, yeah, no, sorry. Um, I mean, he might need to move a little bit, but... Yeah, um... <laughs> Out to where the whether he feels the magic was being fired from. Well, that, that was that way. Well, he doesn't know, but uh, it's directly in front of him. Oh, okay, okay, so he can't. Okay, so he um. I want him to move. What is he there? He's not much good there. He's not much good there. Uh, no, he will do a hold action, and if Kiros is going to move further, then he'll follow her out and perhaps continue his action from there, which is probably to do a, is to do a perception roll out that direction. Well, to assess what's happening down on the ground on that side. Okay. And, and out into the darkness if he can. So if, I mean, he sort of senses that Kiros is moving, so he'll just wait his turn until she moves on, and then he'll follow her and then act to uh, do a perception roll. Okay, cool. Done. Uh... So these there, these things have, are kind of mulling around. Some of them are coming up and clawing at the stone, um, making awful noises. And these shambling, rotting things are moving around here as well. These ones down here are making no attempt uh, to climb. This one has come through on this side. Um, yeah, making no attempts to to climb. They've been down there for now nearly a minute or so, and they haven't attempted to, to come up towards you. Um, but eight. Uh, yeah, it doesn't climb very well, but it does manage to uh, scramble its way up a bit more. And right into Neathanol, your firing range. You now have a full shot on it. Um, right, that's as far as it's going to get this turn, though, right? It is as far as it's going to get this this turn. Uh, next turn, it will be on you. It will be able to attack you next turn. It's close. But this turn, you're okay. All right, I'll attack. Yep. Oops. 84. 84? 84. This is, sorry, Karlstick, I mean. Yep. Yep. Uh, sure, what's the... This, is it the same spell again? Yep, obviously uh, gesticulating. Yep. Waving hands. Uh, so as a... You're a mentalist, correct? Yeah. So um, you only get one of those bonuses. I think it's just the plus 10 for the gesticulation. Uh... So, what was it? 84 plus 10 plus uh, base spells. Oh, plus. Yeah, she's 10th level. Yeah, 10th. Nice. Okay. Um, good roll. Very good roll. And you are 10th level, and it is. Uh, 
Okay. Um, so let's see if we have a repeat the last time. It's got to roll something very large, more than a hundred. Uh, so let's see how it goes. It, the critter did manage to do it last time. Exclamation mark. R space D 100. It fails. What happens to it? Um, so yeah. Um, Cyclone rises up, races up, strikes target, delivering a C unbalancing critical. Oh. Okie dokie. Can you just give me a second to set this up? On number eight. Where is it? There we go. Attack with a. Ooh, what is. I'm balancing you. There you go. Cool. Uh, zero. A U. Uh, a C U. Cool. Yeah. Uh, give me a roll, please. Hope for a high number. Sixteen. Sixteen. Side strike. Uh, must parry another five hits. Doesn't doesn't affect by the five hits, but it does take five hits. And I will say it was a reasonably weak strike, but I would still say it's going to make a moving maneuver or a maneuver, a, a maneuver basically to hold on. I'm going to say it's a light maneuver. So it's a pretty light critical strike, all or nothing. Oh, it doesn't roll very well though. 32. It's got to roll a. 60 or under to continue hanging on to the stone exclamation mark r space d 100 uh, above 60 it falls below 60 it stays on this, hurrah. hurrah uh this critter uh loses its grip and topples some 45 foot straight down um let's and i'll just roll do you want to just for fun do you want to roll the full crush damage on this give me a roll please um yeah let's do it. yep as per usual 23 23 plus 45 is that right it is Sixty-eight. Four crush attack table, nastiest table in the book. Sixteen and a crush. Do you want to roll the crush for me? Actually, roll an impact for me, Graham, please. All right, let's go high. Ugh. Seven. Seven. Um, yeah. Uh, ineffectual crit, however, this thing falls to the ground, there's a horrible kind of <laughs> noise, uh, its neck is at a very strange angle, so is both its legs, and it's not moving any further. That is, I'm going to call that, uh, killed, third level. Right, thanks. Um, with the remainder of her round, she will, um... Just crouch back down again. Cool. Done. Uh, GM is just going to quickly nip out, grab a drink. I'll be back in a second. Uh, next person to to give you some thinking is Mithan. Uh, I'll be back in a sec. Hmm. Um, right. How are we going to save Grey here? Mithan will try a, a flow stop spell, which stops bleeding. I don't know if what's happening is bleeding. Of five hits per round. And I wonder if, I think Kiros should just go up and blast that thing. I mean, yeah. I think she's angry enough, right? Just, just kill it. way to just stop the bleed. <laughs> just kill it, right? Just... Be careful. She's going to crawl over it and shoot it. 
and she's going to yep. tell Gray to start crawling. Yep. So Methane can try. The other option, I reckon, is um, chucking oil on them, and uh, we need to find out if a, a shock bolt, if lightning, would ignite oil. What do we oh. think? Yeah. Well, it should do. But... Well, I, I, we I have think oil lightning is lightning, lightning but it's not wood, I don't <laughs> Sorry? If lightning wouldn't, I'm wondering what would. Right. So, cause, because um, when we chuck oil on them, Leif has got a telekinesis spell, which means he can move to something weighing eight pounds in one foot per level per second. So, he's eighth level. So, eight feet a second for ten. So, one foot per level per second. Eighty foot. So, he could do an oil flask and, and move an oil flask and tip it onto that, that big claw beastie. And then shoot it with it. I mean, I'm just thinking of different ways of. Yeah. I don't know. Oh yes, we do have spare oil as well, Giles, because the whole thing that we—that's what a lot of our weight is for—is because the um. Because we need. Up, yeah, our packs are up here, and yeah, because we uh, burn burn the burn the undead is the effective way of getting rid of them permanently. So the guides instructed us to bring lots of oil. Right. Well, we haven't used a lot of it, have we? So we've we've been one night. Yeah, yeah. Well, Can it's just... Can I grey over? What? Or does he have well, to you're just about there, right? Okay. I'm yeah. coming. Coming grey. Oh, so I think you should shoot Big Claw as, as soon as possible. But, um, any... I'm more, still worried about that, those attacks yeah. from the dark, right? I mean, then, once we've got... I think once grey's alright, do we... Do we cast a wall on the other side, so anything that crawls up has got to attack us through a corridor, or, or it could go over the top of the wall, I suppose. Maybe. Um, but if it's an ice wall, for instance, if Carrier's put an ice wall in, they're not climbing up that. And then we've got protection on both sides, so it can only re-attack us from above, at which point at least we can see it. How long do the walls last? Uh, Methane's is one minute per level. If it was an ice wall, it's permanent, so until it melts. Okay, so if we're in rounds, it essentially lasts forever. Well, long enough. Level, it's going to be like 15 rounds, right? It yeah. lasts forever. So it's I agree for with you, Fran. I think that's a really good idea. Methane. What do you reckon, Karen? Oh. Yep. Methane, you're up. Cool. Uh, Mithan is um, has, I assume, heard late that Grey is bleeding, and he, <coughs> um, so she is um, going to follow Leif down the wall. Okay. Sorry. Yes. Uh, she will. Well, look in that direction and want to move in that direction if possible. Okay. She she can certainly look yeah. in that direction and she can move in that direction. There is a bit of a yeah. train of people in front of her. What's she doing? Is she put, pushing past them? She uh no. Uh, no. Uh, what, what, what would it take to put past? How much? Uh, medium maneuver as per previously. So is is uh, no, she'll 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 wait until everyone else moves because I think that's all happening this round. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, I was going to ask something else. Uh, nope. Can't remember what it was. Okay. Oh, hang on. Just checking. So her fumble of her bow that was. The round last round wasn't it her, her one last round of action was last round was correct just... correct yeah. correct all, correct all, all good thanks yeah. uh so let's see no okay uh next keros uh so keros you're standing here you see an absolutely horrific sight uh another of your beautiful male friends etienne is lying stricken on the ground unconscious or dead you're not really sure at this stage uh gray who you've just declared your love to is standing or well, is crouching down and there is just this cloud of blood being sucked out of his paws out of the top of his head off his eyelids off everything and being funneled down to this absolutely loathsome thing down down below um, what do you do, Kiros? She's going to, so sorry, bypass Etienne. <laughs> Love you. 
and get to Grey and shoot the hero of the edge and shoot the blood sucking creature with a shock bolt. Okay. Uh, it's a very short distance. It's virtually no distance at all. There is no one in your path. You can, I'm not going to ask you to make a maneuver to step around Etienne. Uh, and shock bolt this thing. Go for it, please. Yeah. Give me a roll. Oh. Are you just going to make it angry, I wonder? He's already angry. <laughs> cannot match the anger. Oh, eight. What was the roll? Eight. Eight. Okay. Uh... This um, thing is is quite fast, or moderately. Yeah, it is quite fast actually, uh, and it attempts to dance out of the way. What? Do you, why is that? Strange. Why did you have that? In the front. Uh, so you've got that as 103. You rolled an eight. You you do hit it. Keros, with your 103. Oh, there's some, even some sensuous guitar in the background. Uh, you do hit it. For a single hit point. Oh. <laughs> no critical. It basically looks up at you and then continues kind of enjoying its bloodbath. <laughs> waving its arms around. She spits on it. <laughs> uh, and can she crouch down next to Grey, please? Sure. Uh, speaking of Grey, you only have three more rounds of stun because you took a stunberry last round. Uh, blood is just um, absolutely peeling off you at the moment. Uh, anything else you, you do or say or anything else I should be aware of? Okay. Cool. Um... <laughs> Excellent. High drama on the wall. Uh, Pashkit. Pashkit stands tall, brandishes his falchion up the front, and he's been quite quiet and quite relatively unassuming. He's always been very deferential. Y yes, ma'am. No, ma'am. But he speaks with a voice. You've never, you, and you don't know the words of what he says. You. Uh, but he says something. And with that... There is sound. Hopefully there is. <clears throat> Oh, there's the nine. There's the ninety-seven. Good lad, Pashkit. Right, Jim just needs to do a little bit of checking here. Goodness. If you needed a ninety seven. Okay. 
Ooh, that's it. Ash kit is. Good to see that 97. It is a negative 75 to this roll. Yikes. So. Whatever Pashkit's doing, he's channeling it down this thing here. And it's got to beat 117. Exclamation mark. R space D 100. It got close. But no cigar. Uh, Roll 90. one here is Ashkit shouts a word in a language that you don't understand. And those that are staring down, there's this kind of intake of breath for a second. The whole jungle seems to hold its breath for a second. And then this kind of whoop noise as this creature here that looks like this, half a face simply disintegrates turns to dust uh this creature here uh uh bellows it makes this terrible 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 noise um it sounds really doesn't like what's happened to it and looks as though it can't this round because it's acted this round, but looks as though uh, it's turning to run this way at speed. Um, and that was number four. Takun, what do you do? Well, I'm looking for oh, fire. oh, sorry. And Takun, I've got some good news for you. You are now operating at 100%. Well, that really is good news. Thank you. Um, I'm looking for targets. What targets are close? Okay. So um, I want to use. Okay. Can, can I? I'm just going to call on Keros. Keros, when Takun became debilitated uh can you recall which which way he was facing 
Was it towards the spindly things behind you? Or was it towards... Uh, was it this side or was it this side? It was towards the easy one. This side? I've made that up. I've got no idea. Pointing towards the easy one. Which is the, this side, yes? Yeah, I, I actually don't know. I'm trying to be funny. Sorry. No, I don't know which way it was facing. But if I had a preference of the easy one, facing the easy one. Okay. The easy to kill one. Okay. Yeah, that's with Tarquin's MO. Okay. That's, um... Okay, cool. I think, I think he was facing to the left. Because remember, there was a sound, we were all facing that way, and there was a sound behind us. And only Kiros and Mithan initially turned around to look behind. I think Tarquin was reduced before that, so I reckon he looked to the left. He was facing this way. Cool. Thanks, Pete. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Agreed. So, Tarquin, um, there is no one apparent on the battlefield that is up apart. Uh, apart uh, there is this thing in front of you. So I've, I, well, I want to use as much as I can to add a arrow to the bow, and I don't think I've got enough to fire. If I'm still um, in fear, which only gives me 75%, so I'll add a, you know, arrow to the string okay. and draw it to 15%. Okay, cool. But firing next time. Cool, done. Okay, you, but you've got a hundred. He's got a hundred percent action, though, isn't that what you said? No, he's still I, not. I did. Here. Yeah, I said that. Yep. Right. Yeah. Can I? Can I draw it and fire it? Well, can I? Will. Uh, I know. You can. Last can, time, you can. Twenty-five in my action. Yep. So, so re this remember this chart here is your friend. Uh, this one tells. Yeah, no, Yep. I looked at that too hard, and what I can't tell is um, how much fear I'm holding. So you are now operating at 100%. You don't have any fear. You can act at 100%. In which case, I, can, I, in which case, I will draw the arrow. Um, I can aim, and I will fire it. You will. Yep. Uh, you're snap firing this round, which is a negative 15 to the roll. Give me a roll, please. Yep, absolutely. Give me a roll. When you're ready. 49. Chris, 49. Uh, 49. Cool. Cool. Uh, 49. Uh, and you are at negative 15. Um, unfortunately, Tarquin, the shot goes wide. Doesn't even hit it. And the arrow just uh, snaps and cracks and breaks on the ground below. And that, that was a 90% action. You have 10% left to act, Tarquin. Alright, he'll pull, he'll drop. Okay, done. He's down. Cool. Thank you. Uh, Demos, last for this round. That is you. Um, yes. Uh, so that thing that he was going to stab is no longer there. So he's got yes, it's there. Um, I'm not sure what, what he's going to do, really. He's. Um, is there anything that he's aware of? He wouldn't have been aware of any of the other ones, would he? Um, Okay. 50-50. Okay. He's looking to see if there's anything else coming from above or uh, from the, the, in front of the, the, front of the wall. Well, he can't see in front of the wall. Or can he? You said the wall was six foot. How tall is Demos? So in this direction? 
Okay. Uh, give me a perception roll, please. And you're spending... Uh, 50%, uh, he got a 96. <laughs> yeah, shame. Yep. Um, and he's spending... So he's using it all on perception? Is that right? No. Okay, okay. Um, so 50% perception, so that's a plus 20 to this roll, and it's a 96. Uh, cool. So, oops. And what's his bonus, please, for perception? 50. It's 50. Uh, yeah, I mean, he's peering off into the gloom out here. Um, he's, he's aware of some more of these things. Uh, staggering and shambling around. Uh, at least that number of them. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six or so. Uh, but other than that, no, nothing else. Um, that is the end of the round. Um, oh, sorry, um, because Mithan and Leif both had held actions. Ah, uh, yes. Yep, Leif was going to was moving to the end of the wall and was going to draw perception out. Yep, um, and he'd like to move so that Mithan can eat more easily get past him. And then after he's done his perception, he wants to move back behind the wall after she's okay. moved past. So uh, give give me a perception roll, please, Pete. And how much is he using on his perception? I mean, he he doesn't need to move any significant distance to peer past the wall. Cool. Uh, yeah, and then move back once yes. she's gone. So otherwise, so minus movement. I don't know if that's ten percent or whatever. Ten percent. Yep. Pull. Yep. Pull. So, so that would give you. Um, uh, uh, that would give you plus on, plus six, 60 to this roll. Is that right? Is that right? What was it? Was it extra ten over everything? So yes. 30, 40, 50, 60. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's why I count. Yeah. I'm yeah. Using my fingers. Yep. Okay. 60 more. Give me a roll, please. Uh, just give me a second. Yeah. Just for a uh, perception moment. Yeah, th th that's more for kind of observing what's around, like in your immediate vicinity. It's more for a um. Kind of describe so, so that that that's um, uh, I'm trying to make a distinction with that change of rules to a how do I phrase this uh, to an awareness check around you. So that's actually just kind of checking to see if there's stuff around you because sometimes we've played where actually a character probably would be aware of of things around them. If you're actually searching for stuff. If you're actively searching, that would be uh, just a, a standard perception roll. Does that? Well, so you can't get the extra plus to it. Uh, I, I mean. uh, I'll give so you. Was sort of his... Okay. I'll cool. give you. I'll give you half. I think it's 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 a really weird. I, I need to describe it a bit further. What I mean, but there because it's both looking with your eyes. Yes, but they're different. One is kind of. Yeah, I'll I'll explain a bit later. But let, let's go for half. So plus thirty. Okay, thank you. And what was the roll? Uh, the roll. Oh, man! Jeez! 99. 99. Okay. Uh, uh, um, what a yeah. waste. What a waste. Uh, Look, yeah. I mean, he's quite specific. He's, he is wanting to see what's down. Sorry, can I describe Yeah, him? please. Want to see what's, who's down there, but he is aware that attacks come from somewhere over that side, and he is wanting to see what's made them. Okay, so, sure. Cool. He is he is half elvish, if that helps. Yeah, it is. And I've got some upcoming rules on that too. Uh let's go to that. Um uh, Oh, and this perception bonus is fifty one. Did yes. I say that? Uh you did, I think, or I heard it from him, but the um but the role itself is very good. Um no, I'm gonna drop it jot, jot it in your channel. Uh, I suspect you're going to share it. Any, well, you may not, depending on what I share. No, he will. He will. He'll well, be it depends what I say. Who knows? Oh, okay. Sure. sure. Um, <laughs> uh, 
Just, just a second, please. Yeah. Uh, coming into channel. Now life. Oh. Hi. Um. Thank you. Interesting. Okay. Um. He will. Uh, um, um. He's got a bit of action left. Can he do more than three words, or how much? Moving back behind the wall. He had ten percent per move behind the wall, but can he speak and talk? Yeah, I'd give you that. Yep. Yeah. He'll he'll point and mm. say hooded figure there. Okay. And and oh, and um, describe the direction. So you know, using our terminology, you know. Okay. My my you know twelve o'clock. My one o'clock. Okay. Cool. Yeah. And he steps back. Yep. Cool. Uh, Thank you. And Mython. What was Mithan doing, Pete? Sorry, I muted myself already. No, Mithan was moving past Leif, so there's probably a maneuver, and she was because uh, to see if she can help with the bleeding. Yes. Okay. So can you can you give me a maneuver to get past Leif? Yes, a medium maneuver, please. Ninety nine. That's weird. You guys are rolling really well tonight. Roll again, please. Apart from when we don't. Mm. Apart from when you don't. 67. Yeah, 99 plus 67 plus what's her moving in armor skill? Um, that's just her agility, 27. Plus 27. That's more than enough to say she manages to dance past, basically flip and do handstands past Keros and come on the other side of Grey easily. She's that graceful. She's just that graceful. Yes, she's massive and that graceful. Um, and if she's got extra action, she will crouch down, as everyone else is doing, to make herself a small. With time. a roll like that, I'm going to say she crouches down. Sure. Awesome. Thank you. I mean, she doesn't. Yep. Yeah, cool. Thank you. Done. Great. That is the end of the rounds. Initiative. I don't think anybody has uh, an arrow on the string. Tarquin fired last round, so we are off. Uh, Nathanel, what are you doing? Um, she's preparing, mm -hmm. um, and she's the, with, the, with what's left. She will uh, perceive uh, upwards and outwards. Upwards and outwards with ten percent certainly. Give me a roll, please. Uh, Forty-two plus eighty-two. Okay. Upwards. Outwards, uh, no, nothing, nothing at this, nothing uh, other than she does do a quick scan and there are more of these horrific things kind of moving in and around the firelights. Um, other than that, no. Okay. Uh, next up is... Uh, yes, indeed. So this creature uh, flees, making a horrendous noise, and starts crashing off at pace, and gets to somewhere out here in the in the jungle, striding away on massive, massive legs. It wants none of whatever Pashket was offering. Uh, and Grey, with with that, the bloodbath that has been pouring out of you ends. Um, you're dribbling in your own blood, 
but you're no but no longer is this cloud kind of billowing off you and going down to that creature uh you have two more not you know this but you have two more rounds of stun left to go um what's what do you do if anything great Finding it a bit hard to hear. Can you speak up, please? Oh, sorry, does he have any wounds that need to be dealt? Uh, no. They, I mean, they no. They're not. It actually was coming out of his paws. Like it wasn't. It wasn't a cast. It was, that was what was so, re so revolting about this. It's coming out of everything. Um, so no, no specific wounds. No. Okay. Well, um, Agonizing. Nice. Oh, look at that. Was that a burger? Nice. I'd love it if someone came and gave me a cheeseburger. Hint, 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 hint. Um, Life, you're next. Um, he'd want to um, expand on his description of what he saw. He'll say, um, what was he saying? I saw a hooded figure about 80 foot away so i'm assuming it's on the ground right yes Checking. yes yeah um out in the jungle about six foot tall with white dots for eyes and he'll again you know try and indicate and describe the direction he saw it in probably would add scary as fuck <laughs> i mean very scary um <laughs> and he would um actually i believe i was wrong before he actually does have a melee a, a missile weapon he's got his bow but, um, so he will uh, use the rest of the round to reload. Okay. Cool. Uh, Mithun. You just arrived oh, at Great Side and the blood, has flood, blood, blood flow has stopped. Cool. Uh, she will ask him how he is. Well. Like, um, not wanting to intrude on Kiros, but she will want to ask him how he is feeling. Gray, how are you feeling? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, yeah. She's wanting to ascertain, ascertain if she should cast hits, uh, heal him of some hits, because if he's a, like, three quarters or half of his hits. So, that's sort of a feeling, you know, is he feeling woozy or very woozy but she'll offer to heal him some hits cool. he's on 95 out of his 122 okay okay so she so so methane will touch him in a non-bloody place and gesticulate and and um yell sort of thing and do a quick spell it's, okay Give me no, Rob. No prep, but no, she's touching him and doing the thing. Notice, yep, Julie noted. Give me Rob. Yeah. Oops, he's... 48. 48. Safe. The spell is successful. How many hits do you heal him in the phone? Oh, yeah, true. Oops, 3d10. Oh, 21. 21. Very nice. 25. 10. Uh, 116. Gray, you're feeling a lot better. A lot better. Thanks. <laughs> um, and Mithan would like to do a snap perception out in the direction Leif indicated. Oh, yep. And I'll give you a bonus uh, for that because you've been alerted to where it was. Give me a roll, please. 13. 13. Uh, could be very good. Could be very bad. Uh, and give me... What's your perception, please? Um, 83. Yeah, Mithan, you see uh, the following... Uh, do you see the following? 
Uh, something like that, perhaps. Okay. Okay. Is that Night King? Kill him, all the others will die. Oh, true. Uh, hopefully I, I, thought it was, I thought it was in, in Propel Um. Uh, <laughs> no, okay, uh, so Mithen will say, I, I see it too as well, if she's got words. And, yeah. Uh, in fact, right there. Cool. Okay, she will. Cool, thank you. Done. Uh, next up, Keros. Um, sad there's nobody else nobody here. Else. Sorry, couldn't ha can't hear you. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Yes. yes, yes. She's sad there's nobody else to kill. Okay. Hey, what about the bloke in the cake? <laughs> Is he? Can I see him far, far away? Or you can't see him. Okay. Well, if I can't see him, I can't kill him. Um, I will. Um, Victor and I will go over to Gray and um, put his head in my lap and say, "There, there, little lamb," <laughs> and rub his brow. And um, victory will give him the <laughs> Okay, very good. <laughs> That's exactly what you do. Um, uh, Silsi, with almost a direct, uh, um, a direct repeat of what Pashket did just before turns and faces this way hey, oh god 82 everybody is many people have rolled well tonight um and he is six uh Wow. Uh, uh, 93 or above. Zero is the first zero. Five, okay. Um, four. Again, whatever this incantation, whatever this uh, spell, whatever this godly magic is, Silsi screams the same word, and again, this loathsome creature here looks like that. disintegrates just turns to dust uh this one here runs at pace as far away from silsi as it possibly can and this one here does the same Um, Pash Kit, uh, begins reloading his bow, sheaths his sword, reloads his bow, Tarquin. I think I'm going to do the same, um, reload my arrow, I the beast. Say again, sorry Joss. Sorry, um, 
want to um, reload my bow. Okay. Ready to fire. Done. Demos. Hello, Demos. That's a cheeseburger, Demos. Didn't know he had a throwing dagger. Okay, very good. Okay, very good. Okay, cool. Okay, cool. And that is the end of the round. It's ten o'clock, guys. Uh, I'm happy to play on for another half an hour. I'm also happy to call it there. What do people want to do? I, I need to go to bed. Yeah, me too. Sorry. Okay. All right. Oh, thanks, Chris. Sure not, thing. Not for stopping, but for, for the combat. It's like, oh my gosh, I didn't know where we were going to go. Uh, roll credits. There we go, guys. Yeah, I, I didn't think he did. I <laughs> didn't think he did. Is that why Demos is taking his shirt off? I'm <laughs> Excellent. Um, who knows how our combat is going to go, huh? Because I really didn't know tonight. Funny how... What was that, Pete? Blood the blood siphon thing is pretty... Ugh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not... Not... Not nice. Uh... Alright. 